Hi, my name is Kim Hardy. I'm the founder and CEO of Hardy Hands Foundation, and I'm in the studio with Jay Haleen. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Jay Halim, and I'm back in the studio one more time. I got the lovely and talented Kim Hardy in here. How you doing? How you doing? Hey, listen. Um, you know, I've heard about. I'm like, where, where's this come? Where's this company come from? It just came out of nowhere. What am I not doing my work? But I just come to find out that you only been in business for a year. For a year, but yeah. But you've been knocking it out the park. I, I, you know, I try to, you know, <laughs> of that one year, you know, because I try to be abreast of um, the companies locally and what they're doing. So I thought I just missed some. I thought I wasn't doing enough work and doing enough of my due diligence, but obviously, you just you know you made a big impact Thank in Columbia you. Thank um, you. this year. So tell us a little bit how about how you came about with you know Hardy Hands. Hardy Hands Foundation came about because I have epilepsy. So um, my primary care doctor, when I was going through a bad bout with it a couple years ago, she was like, "Well, see if you can find a support group mm -hmm. or something that can." you know, help you deal with it because I, I got a little depressed and everything, mm -hmm. which is common with epilepsy patients. And in my research, I found nothing in <laughs> South Carolina. Wow. Which is when you're saying, you know, how did you miss out? It's, it's unfortunate that we don't have any more organizations like this. But if you do your research around the country, it's really not a whole lot of a lot of um, epilepsy foundations. But we're we're starting to improve on that and yeah. educate people on what epilepsy actually is. Well, you know, um, that's the nature of why someone should start a business or organization is to yeah. solve a problem. Yes. So obviously you saw a need and you're trying to fulfill that need. Yes, sir. How long have you been dealing with epilepsy? Since I was nine. Okay. Since I was nine, I was in a car accident and I had a head injury. Um, but it turns out it's in my family. Okay. I like to say epilepsy is like a volcano. It lays dormant for a while and then when it erupts, oh boy, watch out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You know, I'm, I know a couple of people who actually um, have epilepsy, so it's amazing to know that it's, you know, help for them. And immediately when you say that, I know somebody, I'm like, hey, I don't, I don't know if you guys, let's be off camera, I don't know if you guys know each other, but you guys need to meet. <laughs> right. You know, hey, um, I'm here. That's what we're here for. <laughs> so what is one of the biggest misconceptions that people have about someone living with epilepsy? For those that know what epilepsy is or what seizures are, um, the common misconception is if you see somebody having a seizure, put something in their mouth. That's not true. You don't put anything in a person's mouth because it could break the person's jaw. Or if you put your finger in their mouth, it, mm -hmm. they could bite your hand off, wow. your finger off. So um, the, the basic thing is just to make sure you stay calm and keep them calm because when they come out of it, we're going to be a little upset mm -hmm. or we just may not know where we are. Um, and another common misconception is, is that you convulse when you're having seizures, and mm -hmm. that's not true. I could be sitting here talking to you right now and have what's called a staring seizure and yeah, lose about 10 or 15 minutes mm -hmm. um, because I don't remember anything. You, it looks like, like I was diagnosed as a child with ADD. Mm. Come to find out. That wasn't that. No, it was me having seizures in class. And it, it did affect my grades um, because I trying to process things and everything, it, it wasn't easy. And, and like, I'm thinking about going back to school now and it's, it's the scariest thing for me yeah. because I had so much trouble in it. But patience, people people don't understand that, you know, you need patience with it. I've heard people tell me, so, so, you're so young to have all these problems with epilepsy causes a lot of problems within your body. And I'm a female and I have female issues mm -hmm. due to my epilepsy. Yeah. So, you know, the sad part about it is, like you just said something about you were misdiagnosed. Yes. You know, how often do you hear those things nowadays where people are misdiagnosing epilepsy patients for... I, it's, it's, it's actually common. Wow. Um, with my seizures, um, they change up. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm noticing it's like an eight-year span, and here lately it's been four years. But um, I used to have the grandma seizures where I would fall out and mm -hmm. convulse and stuff. Then um, apparently it could have started, actually started out as staring seizures. Mm -hmm. So I probably was having both, but um, a couple years ago I started having them in my sleep. 
And those are the most dangerous ones because yeah. you could go to sleep and not wake up. And for me now, it's scary to go to sleep because, you, you know, know, your faith. And I hear a lot of people, especially um, some some church family members and stuff like that, they'll be like, well, you know, you're supposed to have faith and you trust God and everything. That's easy to say. Yes, My faith yes, is strong. Yes, yes, My faith yes, is extremely yes. strong. But when you're going through something like this, it it can you it also can have to be, live in yeah. reality as well, because, yep. um, you know, and I imagine creating an organization like you did. It's helping individuals to deal and cope. It is. Um, it's because it's usually someone who's not dealing with that to tell you just yeah. to have faith, or or just simply don't know what to say. And I, I'm a big strong believer. If you don't know what to say, don't, don't say, say anything. <laughs> don't say nothing. <laughs> don't say anything because it's it's hard enough. A lot of people never knew what I was dealing with. Mm -hmm. I didn't because. In the black community, we don't talk about anything. And I'm finding a lot in the um, Caucasian community. We don't talk about yeah. stuff like this. It's such a stigma with it. Um, it's kind of like domestic violence. I, I've, I've been partnering up with people with domestic violence because the silence, we need to cut it. Because I, you know how long I was dealing with this before I found out it was in my family? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, was, I was dealing, it, I think I found out about, we put it together about five years ago. Uh, you know, vulnerability <clears throat> um, is something that people don't want to, you know, put put out there that they're vulnerable. Right. And that's something that goes I, hand in hand with I'm domestic guilty. domestic violence <laughs> and uh, obviously <laughs> epilepsy. Because um, of course, I've done a lot of work with domestic violence um, situations. I've actually created a whole, a whole documentary about it. So. A lot of people did not. That was the only common thread between the five subjects we worked with was that they didn't tell anybody exactly. and their family. Exactly. Everybody had completely different stories, completely yep. different backgrounds, <clears throat> but nobody in their family they didn't tell it, nobody in their family. It's the only thing they had in common. Right. So you know, um, I think it's a vulnerability piece. Yes. That makes people want to be quiet. You know, yeah. uh, like you say, they're misdiagnosing you, to saying you're you something wrong with you. You don't want to tell nobody you got ADD. You know, right. you want to feel better. <laughs> You and know. then, well, me and my best friend makes a joke about it. He's going to say, my ADD ain't set up like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I come from a huge family. A huge family. We get together every other year for family reunions and stuff. And the craziest thing is that I had a cousin that's close to me that was going through it. I didn't even know. Wow. Because you hear that common line, what goes on in the house stays in the yeah. house. Well, everything may not need to stay in the house. Yeah. I agree. Some things you just don't need to put out there in the street. But, I mean, when it comes to your health and trying to get help for it and stuff like that, especially with depression and anxiety being an important factor in epilepsy, we kind of need to rely on our support system and our circle. Um, I was in church when this was going on, and nobody, not even my pastor, knew I was having seizures in my sleep. And I almost passed out in church because wow. my blood sugar dropped. And it was like, there was like maybe two or three people. My nurse goes to church with me. So she was there. She knew. Mm -hmm. but And my best friend. But she, my best friend was on the choir. And I was directing the children's <laughs> choir there. <laughs> and I had to I had to tell the, um, one of the parents to come over and stay with the kids because I had to go to the back. Yeah. So it was, it's just stuff like that. Like if I had a, I had a seizure, I could hear some of my church moms now being like, really? <laughs> You didn't tell us this. <laughs> <laughs> so you created this amazing foundation. Tell us, I've seen some of the things that you've been doing. Tell us some of the things that most stick out to you that, you, that you've had, that have been able to accomplish over this first year. Well, I've, I've actually written a children's book. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Adventures of Kimmy and Wally. It's based on, loosely based on my story, mm -hmm. but I made myself a little kid and Wally a puppy. My dog's every bit of 10 years old, but he's the one that was with me when I was having my seizures in the sleep, wow. in my sleep. So I kept hearing teenagers and kids come up to me saying, you know, there's stuff for babies, there's stuff for the elderly, but there's nothing for us. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to, I'm starting with the little ones and I'm going to target the kids and then I'm working on something for the teenagers. It was a little, that, that's a little beast that's harder mm -hmm. to fight, but I'm working on my way to target, you know, everybody. So, um, that that's one thing the book sh should be out in the next couple weeks i'm getting ready to start doing pre-orders i'm gonna have it out in time for the christmas shopping season and um the other thing that stands out is on tuesday um november 6th we were given a proclamation from the city of columbia wow. declaring epilepsy the month of november epilepsy awareness month so that that was our big biggest what i call a big win for okay. us 
because nah, I'm, I'm going to work to thank you. I'm mm -hmm. going to work to try and get us some legislation so that we can get some assistance. I'm telling you, yeah. it's expensive to have epilepsy. I understand. <laughs> so, um, I understand. and I met a young lady. She she she's having trouble getting her meds. She's having trouble going to being able to go to the doctor. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's important, and I know I have trouble myself. Okay. So. <laughs> Well, you know, that those things are amazing, and you're absolutely right. And now one of the big ticket, I mean, you mentioned November 6th is election time. One of yep. the big things that people are talking about all across the country is um, medical marijuana. Yes. It's, please help me out and help everybody out. Does medical marijuana help epileptic patients? I currently am using CBD oil. Okay. And it helps me. I, I had to do something different because... My body would start rejecting medications, mm -hmm. even even allergy medicines. It starts rejecting. I was on medicines for so long, I would still have seizures on them, and the doctors were just like, "Oh, let's just increase the dosage." Well, it had me looking mm -hmm. like a zombie. Wow, yeah. <laughs> you want that. You want to be able so, to punch. so I'm I'm now on the um, holistic bandwagon. Yes, okay. um, it 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 can be. Some people it doesn't help. Okay. But that's just like with medications. You. This whole, the whole thing with epilepsy is a trial and error thing. Is I, I work for a specialist. So when you're dealing with specialty cases such as epilepsy, cancer, and stuff like that, some things are going to work, some things aren't, but it's a process. It's not overnight thing. Yeah. So. Some things are not to heal. Some things are right. to just make people more comfortable. Exactly. Or things like that, or just to get you on through, get you right. by. Exactly. You know, so... It's, it's amazing, you know, we, we always talk about the entrepreneurship piece on, on this show, but I just love the fact that we really get some education because it could be someone that's a family member that we don't know, something we can, I didn't know that you can just stare, somebody's probably staring off into the sky and like, oh no, they're having sit, a, I literally, we we're sitting over here talking right now and then mm -hmm. I just stopped talking and you, you'll be talking and you like, well, what did you think? And, Nothing. And <laughs> it's somebody like, will freak out. About? Right. And you, you may just think, oh, they're just bubble headed or just not listening yeah. or just, you know, and you have to repeat yourself. And even with me being like I am now and good, I still have trouble. Pro I'll ask you something three times mm -hmm. before I can get it because my brain is on overload. It's going like 5,000 yeah. miles an hour and you have to try and do things to slow it down. So. Wow. Well, th again, the education portion. Hey, listen, we have an education show now. <laughs> but no, this is very, very good. I'm glad, you know, I, I pray, I know that people are going to get something out of this. Um, how do everybody go about finding you on the website and, and all that information, how they can contact you and everything? Well, my website is um, Hardy Hands, H A R D Y H A N D Z, at, um, dot com. And um, we're on Facebook. We are Hardy Hands Foundation on Facebook. On Tuesday nights, we go live at 8.30. Okay. Just different topics, some about epilepsy, some not. But it all generally ties in. Um, okay. And just, yeah, Facebook, my um, website. Oh, and my email address, hardyhands at gmail.com. Uh, if you had something, you know, that you want to leave with everybody, something that um, you want to get off your chest and say, hey, listen, they, that people should know about epilepsy, and the, or more importantly, just about hardy hands, leave them with something. Okay, well, epilepsy is a neurological disorder that um, affect, where the brain is having abnormal functions. Um, it affect, currently affects 3.4 million people in the United States. So, I say, what, one in every three people may have it? Wow. So, um, just, just be aware. Just when people are going through something, just listen. Be the support system for them. Don't judge them. Because you never know what somebody's going through. Um, even like with myself, you know, nobody really knew. So just be there. Be a support system. Educate yourself on what somebody's going through. Not, not even if it's just epilepsy. It could be lupus. It could be fibromyalgia. It could be cancer. Whatever. Just educate yourself and know what, what you can do to help and what yeah. role you can play. This is amazing. You know, again, I love being educated myself. I'm glad you guys are getting some education. And we're taking this show to another level. You know, um, it's not always about how much money you made this year and your fiscal year sure. and business and everything like that. Sometimes it's good to just get, those, get some good old-fashioned education and awareness. So um, I thank you, Kim, thank you. for stopping by. And um, I will be paying closer attention. <laughs> and when you get this legislation, I need you to come on back. I'll so, be back. I'll come back every time you ask. So we can. <laughs>
so we can talk about it some more talk about that part and please invite us out and we would love to be right there right. when they you know going ahead and handing you that big fat check <laughs> please do <laughs> and we're and, and we're going to be celebrating right along with you but yes. you guys you already know who i am jay Haleen, kim hardy see you guys next time